Hello there everyone, welcome back once again as we're back in for a new game for Fridays. I'm... I don't really know why I'm recording yet for Fridays yet, so... We're just going to take this opportunity to kind of experiment. So, I think the first game that I want to experiment with is Inkbound. So, for those of you who do not know this game, it is going to be in its beta access with its official release coming out in less than a month now. So, it's definitely, it's definitely an interesting game, and it's an interesting take on the roguelike, uh, kind of like Ascension, kind of Slate Spire-ish mechanics. I'll show more as we go in, so. Got ourselves a... The Magma Miner as our current class, so I'll explain more about the Magma Miner as we go into it, so... But now let's just go ahead and head into our cabinet and take the heart of a hero, which... I'll explain more about this stuff as we go on, so... So, I'm just doing a quick run here to just kind of experiment with things, and... The things with quick ones is that you get to choose which area you want to start in. So, let's see, promenade, proving grounds, or the bedroom. I think I would like to do... I, I like the promenade, so let's go ahead and go with that. So, basically, we're, by choosing the promenade, we basically select our... Kind of like our stage, so to speak. We're basically going to get certain types of enemies, as well as certain types of... Um, well, actually, no, I think it's just simply enemies that are determined by... Certain types of enemies when we pick our... Starting off stage, so let's see. So let's see. What... So messages... Give very unique... Uh, well, statuses. And they also create sets. So, for example, with the Voice of Fortunes, we'll start building up the Wheel Collector set. So, but I don't really... I think the Voice of Fortunes will be good enough. Going the Wheel Collector is pretty decent, so... Okay. Now we get to Augment a Binding. So, down here in our left hand corner is our current bindings. So, now we just simply choose something that will, well, basically make it our bindings better. The oversized bonk is tempting, but I think I kind of like the thought of taking the efficient leap a bit more. So, let's see. Oh, wait, and I almost forgot our potion. Thank you, Makiri Elixir. Not the greatest one for us, but let's see. Let's go ahead and do Tarnished World and Clinic Cage. Get ourselves another vestige as well as some more money. Alright. And into combat we go. So compared to a lot of other rogue lights. We actually have the ability to move around. And as long as we're in this big ass circle, we can move around as we please. So, I guess the question is how do we want to take this? Pretty sure we can actually. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and actually use our uh, leap here to do some damage and finish them all off with a nice good block. And let's go ahead and finish off this guy. So, I suppose I should explain how combat works a bit more now. So, combat basically works in the fact that it's separated in two turns. So, we have our turn and then it'll be the opponent's turn. And as long as we have energy, we can just kind of do stuff like spam one of our abilities, or in this case, bindings. So, and with that, we can easily take out foes as simple as that. Of course, different 
bindings will have different costs, energy costs basically. So for example, our Bonk and Leaping Strike only have a energy cost of 1. But our Smash, which is our biggest hit, has a cost of 2. So, and we can keep track of this with this little blue gauge right here. Alright. Ooh. The training weights could be nice since a lot of our uh, stuff is currently physical. Sure, let's go for it. Let's see. Now here we can draft bindings, which basically allows us to get stuff that can help us out, so... Let's go ahead and take Blink here. I feel like Blink is always a pretty useful binding to grab, so... Now we have Blink, which allows us to... Basically use it to get away. Or close distances, or whatever else we might think we need. Alright, let's go ahead and get some Binding Empowerment going, see if we can find some good stuff for us. Petrol Institution, nice. Gives us Block and some other stuff. Hmm. Extracting Blink is nice and sets spots an orb. And for those who don't know, orbs, orbs basically they give us uh, more energy when we interact with them, so... It also has some pretty neat effects too later, but... I'll leave that for a different time. I think... I think let's go with the extracting link here. Uh, do we want to spend our current amount of quillings? So we have 277 quillings, which we, we can keep track of in this left hand corner. You know what? Yeah. Let's go for it. Ooh. Well, the Mega Smash and the Critical Bonk are super nice. I think let's go with the Mega Smash sense. I think we want that more pure damage versus anything. So, got actually a good amount of augments on us, so I think we're fine with taking this regular combat encounter and getting some more. Uh, vestiges. Oh, and uh, and also another fun thing about this game is that you can go fishing and get fish that uh, can help you out. So, fortunately, this prickly puffer isn't going to do us too much in this fight. So, let's just go ahead and eat it and be on our way. Okay. So, so let's see. We got these bomb. Bomb bits who are planning on hitting us. And then the big bit. Kind of want to see about trying to reduce the amount of damage we're going to be using here. So let's go ahead and leap. Go ahead and warp with our link so that way we can spawn an orb. Go ahead and uh, absorb these two orbs so that way we have. We can reset our leaping strike, which is also another fun thing to learn about, uh, about Inkbound is that by taking in uh, orbs, you can basically reset your cooldown by a turn, which is incredibly useful. And let's go ahead and. Alright. Easy and clean. Got some more bombets to take care of now. Can we reach this? Mm, not quite, sadly. Which really sucks because I would've... Wait, actually, was there an... This is like part of the game where it's just simply trying to figure out the angle where you can... Yes! We can get both at once without having to move as far. Alright, go ahead and give that guy a couple of bonks. Now these orbs do stay around for a little bit, so... Well, they only stay around for like one turn, so... Let's just go ahead and make use of them, and smash. Alright. 
So what do we want to go for here? I kind of like the thought of going Ignible Compass and start building up a critical set. Critical is very, very nice. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and keep building up our critical. So... Yeah, that's looking good. Huh. I don't really like any of these, to be honest. But then let's just go for a wee wall, see what we can get. I like the shield wall. Shield wall has always been a pretty nice one. So, let's go ahead and go to the Fitzdigio Shrine. Now, at this place, we can throw away our current messages to in order to get a, another stack into our sets. So let's go ahead and throw these training weights out of here so that way we can get a 25 uh, to physical damage. Now, an important thing to know about this game is that despite these numbers being a bit lackluster, this is actually calculated by percentages, not this isn't just like oh plus twenty five power to smash. No, this is twenty this is plus twenty five percent power to my smash as long as it stays physical. So very important to know. Now we're running a bit low on our goal, so let's go ahead and take this fight that gives us a big win cage. Oh uh, Got ourselves a treasure chest. Getting this thing will be huge for us since it will give us a lot of goodies. Let's go ahead and use our blink. Do a little bit of damage with a small blink here. And yeah, you know what, just go ahead and take him out. Love seeing that. A little bonk, and we'll go ahead and one out those AoEs. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and use our vengeful infusion here and put up a spike wall so that way we don't take any damage. And uh, in the meantime, we figure out how to do as much damage and we turn. Okay, let's go ahead and jump here. I'll deal a bit of damage there. Suck up this orb. Fortunately, I mean, we could try for the material elixir, but I think it's probably better to just simply wait the turn. So let's just go ahead and go for those consecutive box to just simply do as much damage as we can there. Alright, go ahead and extract another orb. Whew, lots of hits coming at us, so let's go ahead and see if we can do it. There we go. That's a good hit. So with this, we should be able to finish off that guy. Let's go ahead and Mercure Elixir, see if... Oh, I was kind of hoping that we could Mercure Elixir to get... Okay, so... How things are happening. Let's just go ahead and walk up to this guy and give him the bonk. And we've won out of reach. Nice. Alright. Let's just go ahead and power orb and make a smash. Nice. I don't really like any of these sense. None of them are really working with the build that we are currently trying to make so far, so... I mean, Quillen Catcher is a decent one. Yeah, you know what, I guess we can go with the Quillen Catcher. 
And there's a vestigial shrine about, so I guess we can immediately throw it in. Although I am tempted to shred the voice of fortunes to start building up our wheel collector. I think that's just yeah, you know what, let's go let's go ahead and shred our uh, fortune so that way we can get the wheel collector moving. Oh, and looks like we're finally at the end of this area, so now we have this little shop. So we can go ahead and get augments for our bindings and there'll be a fight waiting for us, so let's see. What does store have? Could get another moss spyglass which will useful. Gives us another bonus into our precision. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. We have plenty of gold. Oh well, not really gold, but plenty of willings to spend here. I like the thought of the wing leader's hat as well. And I guess we'll go ahead and round it all out with a augment. So... Wrecking Smash could be nice because it gives us defensive options. Yeah, you know what? I think with how our current build is working, we can make use of the Wrecking Smash. Alright. Oh, Let's do this, Inferno. So, now at the end of these areas, we get to face a boss. In this case, the Inferno. We're suing a big ass AOE that covers the entire arena, but if we go away from the Inferno, we take less damage. So, how do we want to do this? I think, considering all the damage we're taking, we want to activate our shield wall there. I think. We have these annoying little bomb bits out just spread out enough that we can't really take them both down in one go. Well, I guess we'll just simply clean up the both of them then. Go ahead and suck up this power orb with us. There we go. And away we go. So our wing leaders hat since we every time we are getting hit we are generating more energy for ourselves so that's always nice now let's go ahead and smash here like this orb bye Okay, I think I see a pattern that I can do. So let's go ahead and collect... Collect this power orb. Smack the inferno a little bit. Then, we can teleport, generating an orb, and then shield wall to make sure we don't take any damage. Oh. And looks like we got enough Shattered Will to get ourselves another bit of energy. Uh, I never like this move, because now we are standing in lava, and lava hurts. Fun fact, lava does hurt. Alright, let's go ahead and teleport out. On the bright side, we can pretty easily still do a bit of damage to the Inferno without having to risk too much of our uh, health state. Okay. Uh, go ahead and come to that. Okay. So let's go ahead and force this guy into stage 2 so that way we can just kind of skip the whole uh, thing with Jig with him trying to do damage to us. Okay. 
collect this power orb so that way we have a little bit more energy. Take care of his minions. We'll find this ankle. Perfect. Uh, bit bonk. So we're taking only three if we take this. Yeah, you know we can actually take this. The we'll, the energy that we're going to get from our wing leader's hat will be will definitely be useful enough for it. We have a crit on our smash. Oh, that's going to deal some heavy damage. So let's go ahead and start with giving him some regular old bombs. Keep track of our energy. And now we go for the big hit, which now does more damage. And this is because of the Magma Miner's special little mechanic of heating up. So whenever we hit an enemy, we get a stack of heat. And for every stack of heat, we do more damage. So now we smash. And just like that, we move on to the next area. Ooh, the critical smash. That is ooh, I like the critical smash. If we if we can combine all that together, then that's just simply nice. And we also got to upgrade one of our bindings so we upgraded our little shield wall into fortify so yeah and now here we can basically destroy some vestiges, vestiges that we don't need and just simply get the effects of their sets without having to worry about their items not taking up all of our inventory so let's see Edge or the market. Let's go for the market. I feel like we can take on that place. So what do we have? More vaults. Vault plus quillin cash. I like the thought of just simply going for two vaults since we are running a bit. We want to stop restocking our vestiges. Oh, splitting out, huh? That's a bit annoying. I don't like when you guys split up like that. Alright, whatever. Just simply have to make. Yeah, we're just getting quit after quit without bonks. I mean, if that's the case... And there we go. That's the big guy taken care of. Now we have to deal with all the little guys that are now spawning around. being attacked by these two in particular. Let's go ahead and use... Oh, okay, perfect. Can actually just kind of give that guy a bonk and move out of the way. Alright, let's go ahead and pick up that orb. Pick up this one as well, since... Fuck all those guys. Smash. Can't really quite smash yet. Now nah, we smash. Perfect. 
could uh, walk this hill as well, a little bit. Teleport over here. Now we're looking pretty decent. Now all we have to do is... Finish this up. Only one left, and should be able to take care of that pretty easily. Awesome. So let's see. The Traitor Saga, I mean... It does have to stack up precision that we want for the set, but at the same time, we don't really too care about its effect. So let's... what does the other one have? Ooh, the Moss Mother's Embrace. We like that. Could go for the Shining Circlet since... Could be useful, but... I guess we'll go with the Traitor Saga. Go ahead and give ourselves another... We're almost there to... Our, the max set of our precision, so once we get that, then that's huge for us. So... Let's go ahead and head up... Let's go ahead and head up the study here, since if we go to these places, we can still get some pretty nice stuff, like... Uh, I don't really like any of these, to be honest. Oh, jeez. I said that it was going to be nice stuff, but now it's just like... Huh. Let's go ahead and we will see if we can't get something that... Ah, there we go. All wills bald. Perfect. And with that, we our position set is fully leveled up. So, that's going to be fun for us. So, let's go ahead and do this hard encounter, because I feel pretty confident in our set so far. Oh boy, uh, which one were you? Ah, you're the Amplify guy. Fine. So we have a healer, which is not nice, and we have the guy that is amplifying any damage on us. We do not like either of those. Well, I think the best thing to start it off is just simply come in, do some damage. And this is also where our precision really starts coming into play here, since... Uh, because of our set bonus at 6. Because we managed to get them to get the critical charge. It's now back off cooldown, and now we can come in again. So, coming up! Oh, and we can do it again! And just like that, we have nothing to worry about. Go ahead and think for another orb there. And even if things don't really roll our way, we can still. Try again by trying to spawn worms. So basically, this is becoming a cycle of try and create orb, of try and get the critical charge, be able to get it, make more orbs. And in the meantime, you can do fun stuff like just simply quitting those guys all the time. <laughs> uh, they could have been grouped up a little bit more nicely together. I would have liked that a bit more, but yeah. I guess we'll just simply have to make do with what we have. Oh, 
I'll try that again, mates. Because I certainly would like to try again as well. Let's go ahead and take this Scorch Crest because having a big first set is always pretty nice. So let's go ahead and take Tantrum here. And we'll take this Stockpile Wall. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take the Shrine. Now, question is, what do we want to get rid of here? Got all the wing leaders had out. Although, Scorch Request isn't too bad because then we can start, since we already have the precision set already up and one, and we can start going into the Weaver set, which will just simply give us a bunch more crit damage. So, kind of tempted to do that, to be honest. Yeah, you know what, let's just go ahead and ditch this Scorch Request and start building up the Weaver set. So... I think considering how we are looking, I kind of want to take this hard combat encounter so that way we can get some more bindings from ourselves. Okay. So let's go ahead and start by swapping in some orbs. Orbs will be the big thing here. Another big thing that will be useful is getting a kill of Tantrum. Let's go ahead and drink that flask, so that way everything is cheaper. And we can start getting kills with Tantrum. And perfect, we got the Tantrum. Got the Tantrum quit, which is what we desperately needed, to be honest. So close, but so far. Alright, let's go ahead and power up this. There we go. Heal a little bit of damage to everyone. And with this, we can keep a crit on Tatrum ready. And we have some more to do. So let's go ahead and just simply use our stockpiled wall. Gives us a nice big dosage of shielding that we absolutely need. Unfortunately this part is in all of that bloody purple gunk which we can't really step inside of. So let's see if we can't... There we go get around it. Gonna take a little bit of shielding damage, but that's fine. That's what shielding is for. Mm. Alright, bit of damage over here. Goes a long way for us. You out.
Might as well finish you off. Alright. Now it's like to the now it's like to be things up. So all we really have to do is finish off these guys. Okay. Ooh, critical mark. Perfect. We're already walking the critical build. Might as well keep going for it. Go ahead and keep upgrading our wall. Make it plated so that way it's better. Let's see. If we take the Vestigio, we'll probably have to sacrifice our wing leader's hat. And I don't really want to sacrifice our wing leader's hat. I kind of like where it is, so... I guess the next bet, bet is just simply go for the Sea Breach, which is kind of like the question mark points in Status Fire. So what do we have? Stand inside the musty... Boy, in the corner gives off little light. Well, barely flipping frame. We can still make out a big yet shopping coal attempting to keep it alive. Train vessel blares and they turn in your direction to reveal the skin dripping away like wax. They just shoot to the flame. You throw anything into the pool there. Uh, you know what? We have plenty of railings to use, so you know what? We'll see what we can get. Got the magma metal. Uh, not horrible for us, but definitely not what we're trying to go for here, but we'll take it. What do we have at the store? The Bounty Hunter's Pistol, we could keep upgrading our lever. Okay, we have enough for one more reroll. Ooh, Hammer of the Broken Whale is a very nice one since it rewards our critting with shielding. And sure, we go over the precision, but... It doesn't, it's not as if going over the position is going to do anything that bad to us, so let's go ahead and. Alright, Captor. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get rampaging. Captor gave them shielding, which is very annoying, but I think our tantrum can't really keep that. So let's go ahead and see if we can't bump for some crits here. Perfect. Uh, far from perfect. Uh, we can still make it work. Go ahead and just simply activate our little wall. Keep up everything sometimes. Alright. We're taking damage, and then we leave right back in. So, we could use Tantrum here. You know what? Let's go ahead and use it. We can get it off cool. Get it on the crit cooldown over its regular cooldown, then that is always better than anything else, if you ask me. And we have this lovely little cycle of just simply going for stuff. Right. 
have to summon some more friends. We get to deal with them. Now the question becomes, what is the best way of dealing with them? It's obviously not... Can't just really wish for something to happen and it will just fall into our lap. Gonna need to walk for it. Of course, we definitely do have our ways of walking. Going for a straight up box. Doesn't doesn't hurt too bad, I suppose. And with this we can stop focusing on the capital. It just simply becomes a battle of damage now. Now, I outweigh the captor's damage. Ah, uh, yeah, I would say that we have a pretty good chance. Ooh, could go for another extracting link. The extracting bonk is tempting. Although, having a discounted leap. That basically, if we can just simply start chaining leaps together with our positions with a discounted leap, I think that will be huge. Good and grab the mine. No, and we got a little status treasure. Cool. All right. All right onward to the final boss. Sin. I do not like Cinder, but I guess we'll just get to face him and you guys get to see why I don't like this guy at all. But in the meanwhile, we have to deal with the minions. So, this basically becomes a test whether our build is up to snuff. And I would currently say it's doing a pretty good job. Go ahead and leap it. Have not been. Have just not been getting lucky with uh, getting those crits on the, the leaping strike. Kind of really wish we could get that a bit more. Well, I guess we'll just simply have to make do with getting some good old. Bonk's going. Let's see. Take up another power orb here. Yep, there we go. Finish off that guy, and we can do some big damage to that guy. Alright, see if we can start getting those repeats. Stone of luck. Shame. Well, I suppose we can just simply finish off this thing. So appreciate getting more boosts. 
Guess we'll go ahead and finish off. Uh, we actually haven't used our extracting pink yet, so that's good for us. Still no luck with getting the repeated, the, our repeated leaps. Which would be so good if we can do that, it's just so that way I can show how stupid doing something like that would be. But I suppose we'll just simply have to settle with just simply throwing a tantrum and smashing. Smashing everyone into their teammates. Oh wait, down you go. Popping Bonk isn't too bad since we are using uh, Bonk a lot, so you know what, let's go with that. Now, our vestiges are currently full, but there is a little trick that we can do with the fact that we can just simply head up to this harvester and just simply start getting rid of anything that we don't really need. And honestly, I don't think we really need those two. This doesn't really fit the bill. We could use them for their set bonuses, but not really much else. Not a, I, I mean, not the greatest ever, but... Ooh... The Contrition? This is the first time I'm getting the Contrition of our Lyra, but... Getting double our shield game when we're getting stuff like shield from our passive, shield from Fortify, we have this Vengeful Infusion, we have the Hammer... Yeah, you know what? We're looking pretty nice! Alright. Oh, it's in the... Uh, time to fight a boss! And this is the reason why I hate having to fight Cinder. Cinder likes to call on these little minions. One of them basically gives Blazing Barrier, which deals damage back to me if I dare hit them. So, I have to take care of this guy in order to make sure that we can start attacking the others. Ah, yes! Repeat! Aw, oh, only twice? A bit disappointed, but what can we do? Alright, well, let's see if we can't start... Can't start trying to farm for... Our crits to get online. Uh, okay, well that's a little bit embarrassing, but what can you do? Although, Cinder also gives us this lovely little thing called Cinderpox, so... If we don't do anything about it, then we're just gonna be taking increasing amounts of damage, which we don't like. But, we can take out this guy. Uh, the Cinderpox Tangled in order to spawn something that can give us the ability to rid ourselves of Cinepox. As soon as I can immediately find the right way to hit. And now, by using that, we can rid ourselves of the Cinepox. Oh, and now Cinder is flying now. Well, that happens when you turn them into their next stage like that. So it shouldn't be too surprised, I suppose. This means that our damage is doing better than we expected. So 
let's see. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take this power orb. Once, no shame. Well, at least our box are coming in clutch for us. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab these. And start getting rid of this guy. Since. Can I get a quit? Don't want this guy. We don't want that guy to be giving Cinder and the other, the other guy the flaming fail yet there. So. All right, next phase. Taking a little bit of damage from the center box. Uh, uh, well, since we're getting into the final phase, let's just go ahead and use our ventral infusion here. Right, let's go ahead and blink. Extract some more orbs out. Let's go ahead and see about trying to... That's not good. We're going to be taking a little bit of damage here because of the same box. Uh, that's exactly why we were killing that uh, Tangled. Because this way we can cleanse our super box. And now get back to worrying about send this little helper here. Now, all we really need is just simply a good turn so that way we can just simply start critting, which we are not. I mean, granted, we only have a 28% chance, but I've seen times where it's just like 28% chance is all we really need sometimes. Although, we are also in the face of the game. And Cinder isn't really calling out any more of her tank. Which is very bad for us because without the tank, we can't cleanse. And without cleansing, we really need to be vulnerable. We really need to be aware about uh, taking heads that we shouldn't be taking. Getting close. A little bit more damage. There it is. Smash! Oh. And we managed to win. Almost. I was a bit worried at first as we were getting into the stage where it's just like, we weren't getting very reliable uh, crit chances, but sometimes you just simply need to keep rolling the dice and eventually they'll give you what you want. So, this is just simply a bit of an example episode. If any of you want to see me play more of this or get more explanations, there's plenty more to Inkbound than just simply this. So, it's kind of like Slater's Why with the fact that you can go on to more challenging ones with more di difficult modifiers and whatnot. So, let me know how, what you guys think. And yeah, that will be all for today's episode. I hope you all enjoy it. Make sure to like button, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button because you guys and girls that make this channel alive, and I'll see you all next time. Bye now!